Getting the exposure of an image or scene right is one of the most important and crucial things that determine the final aesthetics of an image or a scene. Even with the newer impressive image sensors in modern cameras and their awesome optical capabilities, sometimes some images or video footage that are either over or underexposed by more than a few stops may be completely unsalvageable. You cannot recreate details that the camera never recorded in the first place. All you can do in post-processing is enhance or reduce some details. It's really that simple. Shooting raw may bail you out occasionally, but not always. Like everything, this margin also has a limit. In spite of all that hangs in the balance, we photographers, videographers, and filmmakers are quite happy to nearly always eyeball the exposure of an image or a scene. The most that we do is take a test shot and look at it on the LCD screen, guessing everything all the way. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to check the exposure of the image or scene in real time as unobtrusively as possible and not based purely on guessing? Well, there is. It's called the Zebras or Camera Zebra Patterning. Hang on to the end of this video because I'm going to explain everything you need to know about zebra patterns and how to use them to improve the exposure of your shooting. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. I want to get going on the topic quickly, but do stick around till the end of this video because I'll tell you about some freebies and training courses I offer to improve your photography, video production, and filmmaking work, and to help grow your business through earned media exposure, which is basically free advertising. If you like what you see, Smash that subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video each and every Wednesday. Remember, I welcome your comments, questions, and more on all of my videos. Let's begin by defining what a zebra pattern is. Camera zebra patterning is an exposure assist tool that is used to identify and highlight areas of the image which are exposed beyond a set threshold limit. Diagonal slanted stripes of black and white lines are overlaid over the identified parts of the image or scene, highlighting the affected areas and indicating improper exposure levels. In simple words, camera zebras are used as a tool which helps avoid accidental overexposure in images or scenes. How do you activate the zebra pattern? The application of the tool is as easy as it gets. All you have to do is activate it on your camera and set a threshold limit. Say you set a limit of 70%. Most cameras use percentage values for this purpose. So now when you point your camera towards a scene, any area of the scene which is brighter than the 70% threshold value you set will be highlighted using a zebra pattern. Say you want to protect yourself from accidentally clipping the highlights of your images or video. In that case, you can theoretically set the threshold limit to 100% and just keep it there. So what do I mean by 70% or 100% anyway? Well, digital cameras record the image as a series of numbers, ones and zeros, just like all digital devices do. Those numbers represent the brightness of each dot or pixel making up the recorded image. The brightness can be thought of as 0% when it's totally dark or black and 100% when it's as bright as it can possibly be. Anytime the camera finds that a certain portion of your still image or video is getting so bright that no detail in that area is being recorded in the camera, it will highlight the area for you and warn you against it. Now an important note, zebra patterns are a highlight warning indicator that is common in cameras today. However, it does not actually control the exposure. It only warns you which highlights are the problem areas with the zebra stripe overlay I talked about earlier. The stripes will not be recorded into the resulting image or scene that you shoot. The stripes are not a solution in themselves. You still have to fix your exposure by making your exposure triangle changes. 
You can use the Zebra Exposure Assist for capturing stills or videos as well. Many external monitors also have the Zebras built into them. So if you already own one, check to see if it has Zebra patterns. You can then connect any camera to it and instantly use the Zebras, even when the camera body doesn't have the feature itself. If you are still not sold on zebras, never mind, you can always use your histograms for your exposure checks. It is equally as powerful and just as good at finding exposure related problems. Now, I've actually done a video on understanding histograms, and I'll link to that in the description below so you can watch it after you watch this video and you can learn even more. The 100% zebra pattern indicates that the recorded pixels are at their maximum value. If you were to turn the camcorder's exposure up further, the pixels can't go any higher than 100%. You are still turning up the brightness, so detail in the image will start to be lost. Once recorded like this, the details can never be regained. It's similar to recording sound too loudly. Once audio has been captured too loud and becomes distorted, it cannot be brought back to a lower level and be considered undistorted. Seeing the zebra pattern on your screen if it is set to 100%, is a big warning flag that your image is about to be recorded too bright and the exposure should be reduced to prevent overexposure. The other major use for zebras is to set the correct exposure for faces, for example, when you're shooting an interview. There is a general rule of thumb that white Caucasian faces reflect about 60 to 70% of any light that falls on them. In exposure terms, that corresponds to 60 to 70% brightness of the pixels. So the idea of using zebras set to 70% is to change the camcorder's exposure settings, the f-stop and the gain, until the face just starts to show the zebra pattern in the viewfinder. That way you know you've got the exposure set correctly. But don't overdo it. You don't want the whole face necessarily being zebraed out. Just a hint of the pattern on the brightest spots Usually the nose and forehead will do, and then if you set it to that, your exposure should be fine. At this point, you're probably wondering what happens for non-white faces, and the answer is not quite so simple. Firstly, the whole 70% thing is merely a rough guide because the range of human skin tones means it's only ever approximate. This becomes more pronounced with non-white faces because the range of tones means there's no simple ballpark exposure figure to work on. You have to simply go more by eye or start by exposing to 70%, which will be vastly overexposed for a dark skinned person, and then dial the exposure down. Be careful when relying on zebras to set exposure though. Also best to start off too dark and bring the exposure up rather than start bright and bring it down as this means you'll err on the side of underexposed a little. In this case, you can brighten the image up in post-processing without losing detail during your later edits. If, however, you start too bright and bring it down, you may still overexpose some parts, which as I explained earlier, can not be recovered. You lose all that detail. Another useful way to use Zebra is to use it as an exposure meter. With your camera set to auto mode, frame the camera at the scene to be recorded and note on which parts of the scene the zebra stripes are active. Switch the camera to manual operation and adjust the iris controls so that the zebra stripes overlay in the same place that they were in auto. This way, your manual exposure setting is going to be at least in the right zone, if not spot on. I usually then close down another stop to give the picture a little bit more saturation and detail. So how do you activate those zebra stripes? Every camera is different, but to turn the zebra stripes on, there should be a switch or menu item labeled zebra or zebra stripes. If the camera has the option to change between different zebra settings, say 70% or 100% like I mentioned, make sure you know which settings you are using and the resulting effect. Use the zebras to guide your iris settings. In general, a small amount of zebras on the hottest part of the subject is desirable. Practice and experiment with this feature, taking a few test shots so you can properly dial in the exposure. Beware that zebras aren't foolproof. They should be used as a guide only. Like all tools, it's there to help you, but must be used together with your eyes and your experience to get the exposure right. Now, if this is making sense to you, but I've got it in the comments section below. 
My question of the day is, have you ever used zebra sipes to improve your shooting? If you have, leave a comment below and let us know. If you found the information in this video useful, I'd like to hear about it from you. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you think what you saw was great, please do like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the information that I provided, please share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,600 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thank you for sticking around this long. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies in training. As a professional video producer and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings to shoot with your DSLR, mirrorless, or video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos, and particularly your videos, to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. In it, you'll find all the info you need on important video techniques, such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and more. I've also created an editing training program for Adobe Premiere Pro. My quick start training is designed to get you up in editing video in under two hours and includes over 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors that get you started in the program and makes your workflow go much faster. Now, I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs to reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of media without spending big bucks on advertising. I've worked with Christina and used her advice and training successfully, so I know from first-hand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program, and it will help you to take advantage of mainstream media so you can stand out from the competition because that's not something everyone has access to. Best of all, unlike paid ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility to become the go-to brand everyone talks about and wants to do business with without spending a fortune on advertising because the program is geared to get you free advertising. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you as well as links to get more information. You can help to support my channel by purchasing my training courses, requesting my free downloads, or by hiring me to shoot and edit for you. I have also done other videos on filmmaking and video production and photography as well and I'll link to those in the description below. Finally, if you follow me for a while now, you know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers just like you on Facebook where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. I love new members who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own skills and experiences. The group is private and only for people in the filmmaking, video production, and photography industries that I work in myself. It's not a public group like my business Facebook page that I talked about earlier. That group is public and anyone can see that because I want them you know, to find me and to hire me to work for them. You will find a link to that group in the description below. So feel free to join it where you can learn even more.